Okay, we're in this section 13.3 now. This is solving nonlinear systems of equations. We have two things to do here. The first is to solve the systems with substitution. The second is to solve systems with elimination. Now we've already done systems of equations once this semester. Those were linear systems and our primary focus before was looking at three equation systems to introduce how to solve with matrices. So I have good news for you. We will not be doing matrices in this section uh, because these are nonlinear systems of equations. They cannot be solved with matrices. And so we are just using substitution and elimination. And since we've done this already, we're just going to jump right into some examples to see how they're different. So our first example is to solve the system. And we have y equals the square root of x and x squared plus y squared equals 6. So since we've, we're pretty familiar with substitution and elimination, when we encounter these examples and these practice problems in this section, I'm going to talk about things that you can notice to decide which method to use quickly and will make it easier. So since right here, this first equation is already solved for y. It means that substitution is going to be the faster and the easier method to choose. So we're going to take our equation here and just substitute this into the second equation. So we have x squared plus the square root of x squared equals 6, or x squared plus x equals 6, or x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. And now we're back to chapter 10, solving quadratics. This is x minus 3. No, it's x plus 3 times x minus 2, or x equals negative 3 and x equals 2. Now, just like we did with the quadratics, our equations were not quadratic equations to start. They were just nonlinear equations, so we have to check these in both of our equations. Now, since this is the square root of x, y can't equal the square root of negative 3. Right? This is an imaginary number, so we cancel that one out. So our only choice is for y equaling the square root of 2, which means our final answer is 2 comma square roots of 2. And the other option that we have to do, so this is one answer. We also plug it back in, so we have x equals 2, so that's 4 plus y squared equals 6, and so y squared equals 2, and we are doing the square root and the square root, so y can be plus or minus the square root of 2. Since we already have the positive one here, this should also be 2 comma negative square root of 2. <clears throat> so moving on to the next example we are going to solve the system x squared plus y squared 
equals 4 and x plus y equals 3. So again, if we encounter a system like this, this is a circle from our conic section and a line. Since this equation has no square terms, no x squared, no y squared, substitution is still going to be the best choice here. Substitution. Because we can easily solve this second equation for one of the variables. So I'm going to solve it for x. So solving this equation for x, we have x equals 3 minus y. And I can swap this in. We have 3 minus y quantity squared plus y squared equals 4 or 9 minus 6y plus y squared plus y squared equals 4 or 2y squared minus 6y minusing the 4 over will give us plus 5 equals 0. To solve this we're going to use the quadratic formula so we have negative b, which is positive 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared, negative 6 squared, minus 4 times 2 times 5. That's a 5 there, I promise. And this is all over 2 times 2. So simplifying, we have 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 40, <clears throat> excuse me, all over 4. Now looking at our determinant here underneath the radical, 36 minus 40 is going to be negative. And that means we have no real solution. And so this is our answer no real solution because we have no solutions. Every system of equation, its solutions have to be real. So what's happening here, we said this was a circle. It has radius 2 because it's x squared plus y squared equals 2, so it looks something like this. And our line x plus y equals 3 does this. So remember our solution to our systems of equations are intersection points. And this line and this circle never intersect. That's why the answer is no real solution. So, oops, throw pens. The next two would have been practice problems. So I recommend you try these on your own, so solve the system. We have x squared plus 2y squared equals 10. And x squared minus y squared equals 1. So for this one, notice that both of our equations are squared on both variables. So the choice here would be elimination. Because they all have square terms. So if you're wondering, trying to figure out why, this is what we're looking for for elimination. So eliminating, we can eliminate one whole thing when they're all the same, because we can't just solve for one. So if you're trying to build a process in your head of what do I look for, if you have one linear term that you can solve for, always solve for that linear term and use substitution. In the event that you can't, you want to use elimination. So as I said, I recommend you pause the video and try this one out. I'm going to walk through the solution now. So since we're doing elimination, 
x squared plus 2y squared equals 10, x squared minus y squared equals 1. I'm going to multiply this second equation by a negative. That cancels the x squareds. We have 3y squared equals 9 now, or y squared equals 3. So y equals 3 or negative 3. So now we need to plug both of these back in. <coughs> so I'm going to plug them into the first or the second equation. So we have x squared minus, uh, oh, this is positive square root of 3 and negative square root of 3. I don't know why I forgot that. So this is x squared minus the square root of 3 squared should equal 1, or x squared minus 3 equals 1. So x squared equals 4, or x equals 2 and negative 2. So this gives us two answers. This is 2 comma square roots of 3 and negative 2 comma square roots of 3. And then for the second answer, we plug in the negative y value. So x squared minus negative square root of 3 squared equals 1. This is just x squared minus 3 equals 1, or x squared equals 4. So x equals 2 and negative 2 again. Again, giving us two more answers, 2 comma negative square roots of 3, and 2 comma positive square roots of 3. So if you're wondering why this is happening, why are we getting four answers? Let's just think about what these conics are. So this minus, it means that this is a hyperbola. And since we don't have x squared and y squared, and we have this, or just x squared and y squared, this two means that this first equation is an ellipse. So if we were to sketch out what this is, this is an ellipse like this. And the minus is on the y, so this is a hyperbola like this. So we are getting these th four points. To positive root 3, to negative root 3, negative, and then to positive root 3, negative root 3. What did I do? Oh, these should be negative, negative. All right, so we're getting the negative 2, negative root 3, and then the negative 2, root 3, the 2, root 3, and the 2, negative root 3. And that's what's happening on that problem. All right, so our last one here. Again, this would have been a practice problem. You should try this one on your on on your own. So solve the system. And our system will be x squared plus y squared equals three. 2x squared minus 3y squared equals 6. <clears throat> so again, since we have squared terms on all four variables, we're going to use elimination. So I have x squared plus y squared equals 3. 2x squared minus 3y squared equals 6. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and since I already have a minus and a plus on the y, I'm just going to multiply this first equation by 3. 
this becomes a 9. And then when I add them up, the y's will go away. And we have 5x squared equals 15, or x squared equals 3. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. So now we're going to start plugging these back into one of the originals. I'm going to pick the first one here. So we have square root of 3 squared plus y squared should equal 3. And so we have 3 plus y squared equals 3, or y squared equals 0. So y has to be 0. So that gives us 0, comma square root of 3. And then for negative square root of 3, plus y squared should equal 3. This again is just 3 plus y squared equals 3, or y squared equals 0. So again, y equals 0. Uh, I did this backwards. That's the y value. So this is square root of 3 comma 0. And this is negative square root of 3 comma 0. <clears throat> and those become our answers. Now here we only have two answers. So again, we need to go back to what these conics are. So this is a circle with radius square root of 3. And this, since it's got a minus, is a hyperbola. The minus is on the y, so it's opening on the x-axis. So if we were to give a little sketch, we have a circle. Pretend that I can draw circles. And our intersection points are at the very edge of the radius, square root of 3, because that's what the radius is. That's r squared, which means our hyperbola is doing this. and just touching at those endpoints. So this is the x squared plus y squared equals 3, and this is the 2x squared minus 3y squared equals 6. So that's what's happening. <coughs> on this problem. And so this is in stark contrast to the last problem where our hyperbola crossed inside the ellipse. So you can see some of the combinations. When we have our conics, we can cross just at the vertices of the circle or the ellipse or at the on the outside of the ring. We can cross through the circle or ellipse and have four. Or the hyperbola could be outside the ellipse or the circle outside here and not cross ever. So when you're dealing with conics like this, you are only going to have 0, 1, 0, 2, or 4 places where it intersects. That's when both have conics. Now if you're dealing with a line like one of our previous problems here, there is a chance where we have 0, 1, or 2. So you can identify by the types of conics, by the types of equations you have. So this example here had one line and one conic. So whenever you have a linear equation, just one linear equation, you can have 0, 1, or 2 solutions. Whenever you have two conic sections, like this or like this, you can have 0, 2, or 4 solutions. It's just about identifying how many possible ones you have. And then we're using the same methods that we've used before. So that's the end of 13.3.